Hi everybody, it's Neil Schusterman, and this is the second installment of my short story readings. This is a story that is in Mindquakes, uh, and the story, since this is the second installment, the story is called Number Two. It's actually a very short story, not very long at all, and it's about, well, it's about the preconceived notions you have going into a story, as well as the perspective that you have. The story might not be about what you think it's about. Number two. A purpose, he thinks. A purpose in life. Everyone has a purpose in life. Yes, this is true. It has to be true, but what is his purpose? Will he have to search for, for it in a long quest, or will it come to him on wings in a vision or a dream? Someone with great wisdom has brought him into this world. Would that someone ever tell him why? And how long would he have to wait for an answer? Not long. Not long at all. Pulled out of darkness and into a bright light he has never known before. Shapes swirl all around him, moving colors and lights all out of focus. An eye, a face, a soft, warm hand lifting him up, making him feel wanted, needed. He wants to cry out with joy if only he knew how to cry. Sounds of voices talking laughing, and a grinding noise. Moving now, moving across the room through the light and toward the noise. Wait your turn, a voice says sternly. In the center of the light is a round shape, and in the center of that round shape is a dark hole. Moving out of the light and into darkness again, into the dark hole, filled with a strong, musty odor. His head is firmly caught in the darkness, tight, uncomfortable. He begins to panic, and the grinding noise starts once again, loud and all around him, around his head, grinding and slicing, spinning blades, sharp, gnashing gears grinding against each other. They slice deep into him, cutting away. He screams, but no one can hear over the grinding. Help me. Help me, please. Something's gone wrong. If someone listens, someone has to hear. I'm alive. If someone knows, someone has to care but the slicing, gnashing knives carved deep, taking pieces of him away forever, cruel, unfeeling, until all that is left of his head is a dark pinpoint. His soft, sensitive core, once protected, is now exposed to the world. Out of the darkness, into the light again, moving through the air that painfully blows across the pale, open wound. The soft hand that had given him so much warmth before now holds him too tightly and flips him upside down. His aching face pressed is pressed against a rough, flat surface and scraped against it like a nose to the grindstone until bits of him are left behind. Silver-gray traces of his life draining away onto the clean, coarse surface. This can't be it. This can't be my purpose, he screams. I am meant for more, much, much more. Doesn't anyone hear me? but all that can be heard of his screaming is a gentle hiss as the little girl presses his face to the rough page and writes, How I Spent My Summer Vacation. The end. So, if you haven't figured it out, number two is about a number two pencil. That's all. It's just a pencil being taken out of the box and being put into a pencil sharpener and sharpened. And the reason why I wrote the story was I really wanted to play with the idea of perspective and tease you. Uh, you know, you don't know what's going on. It sounds like it's something horrible, but all it is is a pencil being sharpened. Uh, but what if that pencil was alive? And what if it wanted to know what its purpose was? And what if its purpose was just to be in a little girl's classroom and the little girl taking that pencil and just writing a story about her summer vacation? So that's what it's about and where it came from. Uh, it's an experiment. You know, a lot of the short stories that I write that are in these collections are experiments. I'm trying something new. I'm trying different points of view. I'm trying different, uh, different voices. So number two was a, was a little, little playfulness on my part. I hope you enjoy it, enjoyed it, and uh, hope you weren't too creeped out about it. And I hope you laughed when you realized what it was about.